whatever we have done in the matrix, whatever we have done in the determinant, that four parts yet now in the matrix. The first one is called the elementary elementary operations on matrix. Now, elementary operations means it may be based on row or it may be based on column. Now, what are the elementary row operation, elementary column operation? Suppose the very first one operation interchanging, it is not looking like the determinant, interchanging of any two rows of matrix A, where A is a matrix of order N cross N, same as interchanging of any two columns of matrix A. Now, what is the interchanging of any two rows or any two columns. Suppose the very first one, we have a matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Very simple example that is 2 cross 3. Now the first operation we are proceeding with the row. Suppose row 2 is now, we are interchanging with row one. So, interchanging the row one and row two. So, it is becoming look like four, five, six, one, two, three. So, row three, sorry, row two is now row one. Row one is now row two. So, that type of operation here is the interchanging of any two rows of matrix A. Now, the question arises in the case of determinant when we are interchanging two rows or two columns, the signs we are interchanging. If that was plus, then we are proceeding to the minus, then if it was minus, then we are proceeding to the plus. Is that happening with the matrix? No. We can interchange and how and why. That is practically after something. Same as for the column operation, suppose the same matrix. Now we are interchanging column 2 to column 1. So, it is now 2, 5, 1, 4, 3, 6. Okay. So, we can, that type of operation is interchanging of any two rows or of any two columns in the matrix A. No change of sign like determinant. Next one, that is the first operation. Second operation is saying multiplication of any row by a scalar. Scalar means any number, any number but not zero. That must not be a zero. Same as if we proceed with the multiplication of any column by a scalar and that is also not zero. Suppose at first we have a matrix like that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Then Suppose the first operation we are doing that is 5 into R2. That means we are multiplying a scalar that is 5 with the second row. So that is becoming like 1, 2, 3, 4, first row unchanged, second row. Now each and every element will be multiplied with the row 2. Remember, when we are multiplying any 
matrix with any scalar all the elements in the matrix must be multiplied with that particular number or scalar but in that case i am not multiplying the matrix i am multiplying only the row 2 so that is 25 then 30 then 35 then 40 then 9 then 11 12 so that is the operation with row 2 into 5 same as we can also proceed with the operation like 5 into c3 that means the column 3 is multiplying with the scalar that is 5 so that is 1 5 9 2 6 10 fourth column 4 8 12 so the third column is now 15 35 55 okay so that type of operation is also possible in the case of matrix only one row or one column or a combination combination means the third part the third type of operations what is going addition of any row of matrix a multiplied by any number of another row of a and that is also same as addition of any column of a multiplied by any number that is the scalar of another column of a okay let's check what is happening suppose a very small matrix one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve okay at that moment whatever we are doing just check that is r3 suppose row 3 is changing with row 3 plus 5 into row 2 that means at first the row 2 would be multiplied with the 5 then the row 3 is added and that is now the row 3 so practically row 1 is unchanged and if we see the row 2 is also unchanged we are only changing the row 3 so that is 5 6 7 8 now i am writing here with a different manner whatever be the r3 is now r3 plus 5 into r2 so 5 into 5 plus 9 that is our r3 the first one r then 5 into 5 so 25 plus 9 that is 34 same as the next one 5 into 6 plus 10 that means 40 next one 5 into 7 plus 11 so that is 46 and the last one that is 5 into 8 plus 12 so that is 52 in that way we can also do the operation with the matrix rows same as suppose another one with the column now suppose c2 we are changing that is c2 plus 2 into c1 so what is happening column 2 is changing only column 1 is unchanged column 3 is unchanged column 4 is unchanged now the column 2 the very first one is now column 1 into 2 so 1 into 2 plus column 2 that is 2 so that is 4 second one 
two into five plus six. So that is 16. And last one, nine into two plus 10. That means 28. In that way, the column is changing. Okay. Now, what is the requirement or what are the requirement of that type of operations? Practically, this type of operation that is also not in your syllabus, but I am just giving you some example. These are required for the simultaneous equation solutions. For the simultaneous equation solutions. Because we are doing it, but why? That is a question. Like you can think about the processes like Gauss elimination process, Gauss Jacobi process, or Gauss Seidel process. Like uh, you can also proceed with the pivoting like that. I am just at that moment reverting back our memory to class six or seven. Reverting back to our in the class seven. Suppose we have a system of equation very small. 2x plus 3y is equal to 7. 5x plus 9y is equal to 11. Suppose if we want to solve x and y, what we can do? That is our equation number one. That is our equation number two. At first, what we want to do? We can eliminate the x or any y. Then back calculation. So we are multiplying with equation number one, three. And with equation number two, that is, uh, sorry, suppose that is three. Okay. So we can multiply the equation number two with the two. So what is happening? And after that, we are subtracting. So that one is becoming 6x plus 9y is equal to 14. That one is 6x plus 18y is equal to 22. Then we are subtracting, so x is eliminated. That is a case of class seven, something. Then minus. So that is fourteen. I'm going twenty-one. Of. Okay, that is twenty-one. Then that is minus nine y, and that one is minus one. Then y is equal to one. Suppose we have one by nine. We have found. Okay. Then we are proceeding with the back calculation. Back calculation means in any one of the equation, put the value of y is equal to 1 by 9. Suppose in the first equation, so 2x plus 3 into 1 by 9 is equal to 7, and then find the value of x. So that is the process where we have in the class seven, we can find out. The same type of process is originally our Gauss elimination. What is Gauss elimination? Just write down AX is equal to B in that format. Now there is an another term that is called the augmented matrix. Augmented matrix means here, first the coefficient matrix two, three, then three, nine, and then the resulting. Okay, I am not discussing about that, but the same process we are doing here. What we are doing? 
that is practically our row one that is practically our row two so whatever operations we have done here the first we are going to do row one is unchanged then we are proceeding with the row two and what is row two row two or row one minus row one minus no sorry that is three into row one minus two into row two we are changing the row two in that way with row one multiply three with row two multiply two the same thing here that was the equation here that one the row so the augmented matrix is now the first one is same two three seven and then here that one is six or that is zero then 18 then 22 now from here we can also find the value of x and y i am not discussing this but remember this type of operations we are saying about in the matrix operations of row and column okay the same thing we are changing or multiplying or interchanging or doing any type of operations with row or column so that is needed for the elementary row or operations now another one based on that elementary operations with the row and column there is another one thing we can say that is the row equivalent and column equivalent matrix matrix what is this suppose the first one suppose we have a matrix one two three four five six like two plus three first operations we are doing that is row two interchanging with row one so it is becoming four five six one two three then the second operations we are doing row one is now row one plus three row two so we are getting the row two is now the same one two three now that is three into r2 that means three plus four that is seven six plus five that is eleven nine plus six that is fifteen now suppose the very first one was a and we are saying it as a b as only the row operations has done has been done only the elementary row operations has been done we can say a and b are row equivalent that means here only the row operations has been done so whatever be the matrix a is after row operation whatever the matrix b we are getting those are row equivalent same as suppose we have the column equivalent like same matrix a we have one two three four five six the first operation we are doing that is column two interchanging with column one so it is now two five one four three six then suppose another column operations we are proceeding that is column two is now column two plus two column three so it is becoming the first column is unchanged column three is also unchanged but column two that is 
six plus one seven and twelve plus four that is sixteen. So here, what we have done? Suppose that one is B. So only column operations are here. So whatever B the B is and whatever B the A is only for the column operations A and B are called not equal. I am not saying about the equal. It is saying equivalent. So A and B are column equivalent. Okay. So after operations, row operation and column operation, whatever the matrices we are getting, those are column equivalent or row equivalent. Next topic is be very attentive. That is called the rank of a matrix. Rank of any matrix. And what the rank? You don't have to think about the order of the matrix. It may be a rectangular matrix or it may be a square matrix. But we have to think about sub matrices. Okay, let us start with an example. And after that, we will define what is the rank now. Suppose we have a matrix 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2, 1, 0, 3, minus 1, 0. So what is the order of the matrix? Now, order of the matrix is 3 rows, 4 columns. Now, whatever be the matrix order is, think about, think about sub matrix, which must be a square and of maximum order at first. Now, we are thinking about the sub matrix and that must be a square sub matrix and at first maximum order. What is the maximum order? We have three cross four. Now we cannot get from that example, we cannot get any square matrix that is four cross four. Any square matrix that is four cross four. So the matrix we can get sub matrix square sub matrix maximum that is 3 cross 3. Okay. Suppose the first one sub matrix we are getting 3 cross 3. That one. So I am writing it here. 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2, 1, 0. Okay. That is the first square sub matrix of order 3. Next one. Suppose another one we are getting, okay, 0, 0, 0. That means that column and that two columns, 2, 1, 0, 3, minus 1, 0. Next, another sub matrix, square sub matrix. That means second column, third column, fourth column, 1, 0, 0, 2, 1, 0, 3, minus 1, 0. Maybe another sub matrix, another square sub matrix we can get. Fourth column and column 1 and column 2. So that is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 3, minus 1, 0. Those are the four sub square sub matrices we can get practically. Okay. Now, find out the value. Value means its determinant value. 
Now look at the first column. All the elements are zero. So its determinant value is equal to zero. That means it is a singular matrix. Singular matrix means whose deterministic value is equal to zero. Next one, think about the second sub matrix. Once again, its first column is zero. So its deterministic value is equal to zero. Okay. Think about the third one. Here, the third row is equal to all the elements zero. So its deterministic value is equal to zero. Think about the fourth. Here also, we have the third row, all the elements are zero. So we can think that one as the deterministic value zero. So whatever the sub matrices, all maximum order squared sub matrices we can get from the matrix if if any one of the square sub matrix determinant value is not equal to zero if any one equal to zero we may say the matrix rank is that order here what is the maximum was that one was three that one order was three but all the three order sub matrix determinant value is equal to zero. Here all have the zero value. So rank is not equal to three because that is connected with that order. If anyone has non-zero value deterministic then we can say the rank is three but here all the values of the determinant are zero or all the square sub matrix is singular so we cannot say the rank is equal to three so what to proceed next next we would proceed to the next lower sub order so lower sub order means three to two order matrix, two order square sub matrix. Okay, let's check what may be. Suppose the very first one, like that. I am writing it here in that way. Okay. Suppose that one zero one zero zero. I am writing it here. Zero one zero zero. Another one. Suppose here are so many. We have to think about all that. Okay. Next one. Suppose one two zero one or two three one minus one or zero one zero zero or one two. 0, 0, like that. I'm just, uh, just I am thinking at that moment, 3, 1, 2, 0, 1. Suppose the next one, 1, 2, 0, 1. Another one is here, 2, 3, 1, minus 1. 2, 3, 1, minus 1. Okay. Just think about the first one determinant. That is already 0. Think about that one determinant is equal to one. So we don't have to check. Have to check any other order, any other square sub matrix. Because each and every time I am saying if anyone, so its value is one, non-zero. So order is 
two. So the rank of the matrix, rank of the matrix is equal to two. Suppose once again. Suppose a four cross four or five matrix. So first we have to check all four cross four square sub matrix. Okay. If all are zero, rank is not equal to four. Then check all three cross three. Square sub matrix. If all are zero, rank is not equal to three. Proceed in the lower level. If two cross two, all are zero, rank is not equal to two. Four. If more lower level. One cross one. If any one is non-zero, so rank is equal to one. Otherwise, proceed to otherwise. We must say matrix has no rank. Matrix has no rank. We never say matrix has the rank zero. We always say matrix has no rank. Suppose here we have a matrix one zero 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 zero. Now that is three cross six. So first we are checking all the three cross three. All have the value zero, so rank is not equal to three. Then check all two cross two. All are zero, so rank is not equal to two. Then that one, we have that one, which is one not equal to zero, so rank is equal to one. Suppose another one. That one is zero 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 zero. So two cross three. So first check two cross two. Rank not equal to two. One cross one. Rank not equal to one. So matrix has no rank. Now, what is the application of rank? One example already in your part. That is, in the first time when there was the defining about the row matrix, when we were defining about the row matrix, already said the row matrix that is called the vector. We have already said. Now that one is. Another application for that, where that is called with the term that is independent and dependent vectors. Not discussing much, but the, uh, just discussing about the question. Independent and dependent vectors. Your question may be like that. Consider the vectors. <clears throat> consider the vectors alpha 1 is equal to 1 2 minus 1 alpha 2 is equal to 3 0 1 alpha 3 is equal to 4 2 0 question is dependent or independent The question is the vectors are dependent or independent. 
Now look at the structure. The vectors alpha one is a row vector, alpha two is a row vector, alpha three is a row vector. So we can consider that one as one, two, minus one. That means the first row. Second row, three, zero, one, four, two, zero. Okay. So that is a matrix of order three cross three find the dependency or the independency of the vectors we have to find the rank of the matrix to find dependency we have to find the rank of the matrix let's check at first, what is the value of the determinant? If that is non-zero, then rank is equal to three. Otherwise, if zero, rank is not equal to three. So we can just find out one, zero, one, two, zero, then minus two, that is three, one, four, zero, then minus of, uh, plus of minus one, so that should be minus, minus of three, zero four two so here that is one into two one into minus two then minus two into minus four minus one of six so result is minus two plus eight minus six or zero so we can say rank is not equal to Three. So the rank is not equal to three. Here comes if rank is the order of the matrix, the vectors are linearly independent if rank is not the order of the matrix vectors are linearly dependent that means we don't have to find out what is the rank for the linear dependence or independency for the vectors what is the rank we don't have to find but we have to find whatever be the order of the matrix is is that the rank is true or equal if that is not true then we can simply say the vectors are not linearly independent that means dependent in that case order is three rank is not equal to three so the vectors are linearly dependent if that one was three then we can say that is linearly independent another one example suppose we are proceeding for the linear dependency or independency okay Suppose we have the three vectors like at that moment, alpha one is equal to five, seven, 11. Alpha two is equal to two, one, three. Alpha three is equal to three, six, eight. Okay, I'm not writing the matrix because the, already that is in the matrix form. So find the determinant at first, okay. So five into one, three, six, eight, minus seven into two, three, three, eight, and then plus 11 into two, one, three, six. Let's check five into eight minus 18, minus seven into 16 minus nine, plus 11 into 12 minus three. So that one is uh, minus 10, that means minus 50, that is uh, 
seven that is minus forty nine that is nine so that is ninety nine. So we are getting minus ninety nine plus ninety nine is equal to zero. So rank is not equal to three. So the vectors are linearly dependent, not independent. If rank was three, then we can say the vectors are linearly independent. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Another one example. Suppose we are proceeding with that is finding the rank. Find rank. Suppose the matrix is given minus one, three, one, then three minus nine minus three. So that is an order of the matrix two cross three. So maximum order sub matrix we can find at that moment that is based on the two cross two. So the very first one suppose minus one three three nine minus nine. Another one three one minus nine minus three. Another one minus one three one minus three. Let's check what are the values. The first one minus one into minus nine nine minus nine that is zero. So that is one. Three into minus three that is minus nine. Then minus of minus nine that is plus nine. So value is zero. So once again minus of minus one minus three that means three minus three that is zero. So all the two cross two sub matrix determinant is equal to zero. So rank is not equal to two. Now just think any one of the one cross one. Suppose the very first one, one cross one, just minus one. So its determinantic value, its deterministic value that is minus one is equal to minus one. So rank is equal to one here, not two. Clear? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Another one. Another one example for the row operations or elementary column operations. Suppose the question is here. Reduce the matrix. Okay. And the matrix is 0, 0, 5, minus 3, then 2, 4, 3, 5, then minus 1, minus 2, 6, minus 7. Reduce the matrix means at that point we can do the row operations and column operations on the matrix. Suppose the Suppose given we have to reduce the matrix to that one. 2, 4, 3, 5, 0, 0, 5, minus 3, then 0, 0, 0, 0. That means equivalency for. Okay. First operation we are doing, suppose, with that row 1, 2. That means we are interchanging row 1 with row 2. So that is becoming like 2, 4, 3, 5, 0, 0, 5, minus 3, minus 1, minus 2, 6, minus 7. Okay. After that, we are proceeding with the operation R3 plus half of R1. Okay. So that one is becoming R3. That means we are only changing the R3. R2 and R1 would be the same. So that is 2, 4, 3, 5, 0, 0, 5, minus 3. And that one is now 
just add so that is 0 0 15 by 2 and minus 9 by 2 okay after that one second do the operation that is 2 into r3 that means multiply r3 with 2 so we are getting 2 4 3 5 0 0 5 minus 3 0 0 15 minus 9 okay and once again do another operation that is r3 2 r3 minus 3 r2 okay and here we are getting so that means r3 is changing at that moment so first one is 2 4 3 5 second one 0 0 5 minus 3 and that one 0 0 0 0 okay and that one is our required required reduced matrix okay so that is the way to find out the reduced matrix we can also use the row operations on matrix and column operations on matrix